I've got two more bits of news. Uh, these were ones from about a month ago. Then we will ask some fan questions. Um, Jeff Gaylord died at the age of 64 a couple of weeks ago, as I write, wrote this several weeks earlier, after recording to his brother a short illness. Now, we talked about Jeff once before as sort of um, a really terrible bank robber uh, and also <laughs> um, maybe a wrestler who didn't really sort of achieve... What he could have done was with his physical gifts that he was bestowed upon him. Um, now, this is what else I've written weeks ago. By his own account, he did every steroid known to man. He went on a five-month cocaine binge that fried his brain during his American football playing days, then turned to pro wrestling after suffering a major knee injury where he debuted in 1985. He appeared for Bob Geigel, Bill Watts, UWF, WCCW, USWA, and also made an appearance under a mask as one of Shawn Michaels' knights at the 1993 Survivor Series pay-per-view. He was mid-card at best for these promotions, despite having a good look and athletic experience. He then went on to become a bank robber, doing six and a half years during one stretch after robbing the same bank twice. He did further stints in prison following more bank robberies, finally being released in 2015. Uh, so, memory, I've got one more thing to say about old Jeff, uh, but memories of Jeff for you. Well, you mentioned the part where he fried his brain. Mm-hmm. When I met him, his brain was fried. <laughs> but he was really, really a friendly guy because he was never aggressive. He was always very friendly. And almost when you talk to him, almost uh, childlike in a, in a lot of ways. I remember him watching him one night in Memphis. And he always acted goofy. I mean, in his normal state. <clears throat> and he was going to jump off the top rope at the Mid-South, and the house was horrible. You know, you put 2,000 people <clears throat> in a building in that 11,000-seat Memphis Coliseum, Mid-South. It looks empty. The old saying, you could shoot a shotgun off into place and not hit nobody. That was a good uh, description of the Mid-South Coliseum. But I watched, and he went to the ring. He was he was he was effed up when he went went to the ring, and he was trying to climb to get up there on the top rope, and he he was off balance, and he finally climbed and got turned around on the rope, and he got up there and he spread his arms out like this, like he's going to jump, and he went whoa whoa whoa, and he fell off the top rope to the floor. <laughs> And and it didn't hurt him, you know. That's that's like a ten foot fall from just the feet, probably a thirteen or over a twelve, thirteen foot fall for the rest of his body. And he got up and he just looked at the people and they were rolling. <laughs> and he got back in the ring and finished the match. And he came back. Nobody said anything to him about it. He just came and sat down and took his boots off, took a shower, and left. <laughs> And that's about the only thing I can really remember about uh, Mr. Hmm. What what do we call him? Mr. Gaylord. Well, calling him because it was his name. I mean, yeah, if we, I called, was in, we had a yeah, the Missouri Gaylord Tiger or something, we, was it? That was it. Somebody said Great Match Tiger. That's what I was trying to remember. But <laughs> he did a, he did another thing too, where and I've never heard of this in my life. And I think you mentioned it there when he punched Eddie Gilbert. Yep, yeah, I'll read out what it says. Uh, Gaylord also sucker punched Eddie Gilbert <coughs> in a dressing room in the early 1990s and a $1,000 paid hit in a Global Wrestling Federation locker room allegedly independent promoter Gordon Scozari's behest due to Gilbert no-showing an event of his. Observer and Slam Wrestling's obituaries also make mention that Gaylord had a bad reputation in locker rooms and for being a locker room thief. Oh, yeah, he did. He really did. He was just, uh, you know, some of the characters that, that were in wrestling, when you talk about them, people don't believe you. They went, nah, 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 that can't happen. They wouldn't. But, yeah, you know, he had a little, he had some sticky fingers, and rings would be missing, and money would be missing. and got rings? Yeah, yeah, you, somebody, you don't mean wrestling you know, rings, do you? No, 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 oh. not rings. <laughs> rings. The rings would be missing, and but you, if nobody saw him take anything, there's no way to prove it. 
he wasn't going to own up to it. So all I could say was, well, you're out of a ring. And there was a few things missing back when I, when I knew Jeff, but nobody could pin it on him, but he, he did have that reputation. Mm -hmm. 